Sani Wali Hoy Kikombra. Iador Akip Shekombra de Sani Riakshia. With this short greeting in Wajaji Ia, or the language of the Osage people from whom I come to this place, I ask to address you all with an open mind and an open heart, and the hope that all of you, especially those before me in positions of authority, likewise sit with openness toward my words and thoughts. These words are similar to ones my Osage ancestors would have used hundreds of years ago when they crossed the Mississippi from our traditional homelands west of that river to these lands of the Peoria and Miamia peoples, whose persistence I want to begin by acknowledging today. As I began, I want to thank Chairman Christopher Kennedy for selecting me to participate in this portion of the meeting today. I also want to thank those members of AFS, CME, and other union workers who are responsible for the labor that's gone into making it possible for us to be here today. I want to acknowledge the non-tenure track faculty members on our campus, graduate employees, campus faculty association members, and other faculty and staff who stood consistently with our program over the years, and whose issues before this board intersect in important ways with those involving Professor Salida. Like many of my tenured and tenure track colleagues, I believe that our campus can only fulfill its highest ideals when everyone who works here can expect and earn a decent living wage and of their constitutional right to organize be recognized as the basis of their dignity as employees and laborers. I requested this short block of time to speak about the appointment of Professor Salida to the faculty of the American Indian Studies Program on the Urbana campus. As the director of the program throughout the process of Stephen's appointment until I was on leave last fall, then starting again on May 16 of this year, I hope I can provide some perspective that you'll find instructed as you consider what you should do when and if you vote on his appointment today. Stephen's standing room only overflow press conference at the University YMCA on Tuesday was exuberant and at times electrifying as he presented himself as he is and how he has always been to those who have known him as a scholar, teacher, and colleague, committed, intense, and engaged but also sensitive to the fundamental worth of all people, fair and open to students who do not share his point of view, and able to listen with subtlety and compassion to students and faculty. It was a gathering that fulfilled the vision of inclusivity and diversity that many of us believe in, Muslims, Christians, Jews, agnostics and atheists, whites, African Americans, Asians, Asian Americans, Latinas, Latinos, Native Americans, Pacific Islanders, every letter and color on the LGBTQ rainbow spectrum, liberals, radicals, civil libertarians, and I'm sure more than one or two deeply conservative people who came out to see what was happening. <laughs> no one expressed fear or discomfort. No one claimed that their beliefs were treated with disrespect. Sadly, we held the meeting off campus because no building manager on this campus was willing to say he or she believed that those they report to would allow the event to happen on the university property. Even at that event, however, it was still perhaps not at all clear how Stevens Scholarship fits into our American Indian Studies program beyond his cutting edge book on comparative Native American, Palestinian, and Palestinian American literature. The fact is, Stephen has an ongoing steady engagement through published essays, conference presentations, and public intellectual work focused on Native American issues. As importantly, his work on Arab American studies, of which he is one of the founders, is built on a foundation adopted from Native studies. One last thing worth pointing out is this. Stephen Salida, who earned his PhD at the University of Oklahoma in English with a specialization in Native American studies, is the first faculty member we have successfully recruited who has a degree specifically focused in Native American studies. The link he makes in that work to settler colonialism and occupation is part and parcel of what is happening at the leading edge of indigenous studies as we practice it at Illinois. Stephen's scholarship and training have unfortunately received little focus over the past six weeks as the Chancellor, the President, and U.S. board members have been preoccupied with a few posts from Stephen Salida's Twitter feed. Rather than say something new and convincing about those tweets, I'd like to make a comment about them more generally. That is, while I understand the initial visceral response about them, about them, 
uh, visceral response many people had with some of Stephen's posts. I don't believe any of his posts to Twitter are obviously or apparently troublesome in a way that justifies what has been done to him. To use just one example, some would have us believe, for instance, that Stephen's reference to wanting all the Israeli settlers in the West Bank settlement to go this ignore the three young men who were who were later discovered to have been killed is a cry for the death of those settlers. That is, his statement about wanting the settlers to go missing is, some, is, is in some way uh, a way of saying he wants all the settlers to be killed, more specifically to be killed by Hamas. What the multitude of analyses of this and other posts over the past several weeks shows is that nothing is nearly so obvious as Stephen's detractors would have us believe. Now let's jump to the rather dubious conclusion that it's perfectly all right to make judgment about Stephen's suitability for an academic appointment in Illinois based on his tweets. Wouldn't it be important that what I was using as evidence against him in summary judgment be abundantly apparent, apparent and obvious? And along with wanting to be sure that what I was summarily accusing him of is obvious and apparent from the evidence at hand, I would also look at his teaching record to see if it showed any indication that Stephen had used his classrooms as, as places to try and convince students of his point of view on the Palestine-Israel conflict. In our review of Salida's teaching, American Indian Studies found no evidence of anything but strong teaching motivated by, by what seemed like a sincere interest in allowing every student a chance to broaden their skills in critical reading and thinking. One more brief point before concluding. This is much more than a disagreement over who we get to hire. Rather, it cuts to the heart of who we are and what we are becoming as an institution. I want to read a short section from a document on the relationship of shared governance to academic freedom that the American Association of University Professors put out decades ago. Academic freedom and shared governance, of course, have been batted around the rock since the eruption of this case over a month ago. AAUP's long established position sheds light, I think, on why that is so. As their document says, quote, it is the faculty not trustees or administrators who have the experience needed for assessing whether an instance of faculty speech constitutes a breach of a central principle of academic morality, and who have the expertise to form judgments of faculty competence or incompetence. As AAUP case reports have shown, to the extent that decisions on such matters are not in the hands of the faculty, there is a potential for and at times the actuality of Administration, administrative imposition of penalties on improper grounds. I know that your authority here is not merely a rubber stamp, but I also know the way these board approvals have been done until now have made it seem like one. Suddenly shifting the ground over this case, where there are so many swirling issues and so much at stake for the campus and its leadership, seems to be an abrogation of responsibility. To conclude, I'd like to make one simple statement and request. You can start us all on the journey to repairing all of this today. We can pick up the pieces and move on. Lack of confidence can quickly become goodwill, but we need you to do your part. Approve the appointment of Dr. Stephen Salida to associate professor with indefinite tenure in American Indian Studies. Hope we're not